In this day and age, forget the coloured casings. Those are just for show. The true magic of the LED lies with its internal workings. Back in 1962, the world got its first glimpse of the luminous LEDs with the invention of a faint red one. A few years later, green LEDs joined the party, perfect for calculators and watches. But to truly light the way into the future and illuminate our world from homes to city streets, we needed the missing piece, the blue LED. And that blue LED, well, that was proving to be a real challenge. Stick with us till the end to get to know the great lore of how the blue LEDs were created. Millions of dollars were spent on research and years turned into decades, yet still no breakthroughs were made. The dream of super-efficient LEDs replacing clunky light bulbs seemed to be fading faster than a dying battery. Enter Suzy Nakamura, a researcher at a small Japanese chemical company called Nichia. Nakamura's lab wasn't exactly what you'd picture for a cutting-edge facility. It was more like a scrapyard than a sleek research center. His unconventional ideas weren't exactly winning him popularity contests either, but Nakamura wasn't one to give up easily. In a bold move, he convinced his boss to take a massive gamble and fund his ambitious project, creating that elusive blue LED. They're basically like energy guzzlers, wasting a lot of power as thermal energy, aka heat. LEDs, on the other hand, are champions of light generation. It all boils down to special energy levels within the LED itself. When electricity flows through, electrons jump between these levels and result in the release of light in the process. The color of the light depends on the size of this jump. Red and green LEDs were easily achievable in comparison because the electron jumps required weren't that significant. But blue, well that required a much bigger jump. It was a jump no one could seem to pull off. By the 1980s, most researchers had thrown in the towel. Nakamura knew the key was a perfect crystal. Any imperfections would disrupt the delicate process, and instead of getting light, you just end up with heat, defeating an LED's purpose. So, Nakamura embarked on a journey to Florida to learn a special crystal growing technique called MOCVD. Imagine a fancy high-tech oven that meticulously builds crystals layer by layer. Nakamura's time in Florida definitely wasn't exactly a walk in the park. He wasn't even allowed to use top-of-the-line equipment for his research. But you see, this only fueled his determination. He spent a year building his system from scratch, all while being underestimated by his fellow researchers. Yet, he returned to Japan triumphantly, armed with a brand new MOCVD machine and a burning desire to prove everyone wrong. He still had to choose the right material to create this revolutionary blue LED, and that decision would lead him down another treacherously challenging path. Imagine a special material where most of the electricity carriers are negative electrons. That's an N-type semiconductor. But there's also a P-type, where positive holes carry the current. The interesting part happens when you join these two types. Upon their collision, electrons jump from N to P, creating a barrier. Think of it like an invisible wall inside the material. Now, if you connect a battery the wrong way, this barrier gets bigger, blocking current flow. But flip that battery, and the barrier shrinks, allowing current to pass. This is the basic idea behind a diode. In a light-emitting diode, or LED as we would commonly call it, when an electron fills a hole, it releases energy as light. The color depends on the energy gap between bands in the material. Silicone LEDs emit infrared light, invisible to us. That's why the first visible light LEDs were red and green. Blue was a tough nut to crack. By the 1980s, everyone was searching for the right material for a blue LED. A key requirement was a nearly perfect crystal structure. Any flaws would mess things up. Nakamura had only a hunch and his belief to go on, and he spent a year learning this technique, facing resistance from colleagues who looked down on him for not having a PhD. Back then, you could get a PhD just by getting your research published, so Nakamura figured even if he didn't invent the blue LED, he could at the very least get his doctorate. Scientists had narrowed it down to two, zinc selenide and gallium nitride. Zinc selenide seemed more promising, but there was a catch. 
No one knew how to make it carry current both ways, which was crucial for an LED. Gallium nitride, on the other hand, had its problems. Growing good crystals was difficult, and no one had figured out how to make them carry current both ways either. Plus, to be useful, a blue LED needed to be much brighter than any existing prototype. In the world of blue LEDs, everyone was chasing the hot material, zinc selenide. Nakamura, however, saw an opportunity in the underdog, gallium nitride. Well, it wasn't the popular choice, it meant less competition, but gallium nitride wasn't exactly a walk in the park. Other researchers had made some progress with crystal formation, but Nakamura's attempts weren't cutting it. He went into overdrive, spending months practically rebuilding his machine to coax better results from the material. His relentless effort finally paid off with a brand new reactor design that could create much superior gallium nitride crystals. Just when Nakamura seemed to be on a roll, his company got a new leader. This boss wasn't a fan of Nakamura's high-risk project and ordered him to shut it down. Nakamura, however, wasn't one to give up easily. He defied the orders and continued his research in secret. He even went rogue and published his first research paper, a bold move that would be the first of five. The leading researchers were using a strange technique involving an electron beam, but Nakamura suspected there had to be a more elegant solution. His intuition proved correct. With a simple heating process, he achieved even better results than the electron beam method. Not only did he solve the problem, but he also unraveled the mystery behind why the electron beam approach worked in the first place. Nakamura's gamble on gallium nitride ultimately paid off in a big way. By defying the doubters and refusing to give up, he made a groundbreaking contribution to blue LED technology, paving the way for a more efficient energy future. So, Nakamura had everything to build a blue LED prototype. He showed it off at a conference and got a great reaction. He was a rising star, but his blue light was more violet, way too weak. Back at his company, his boss told him to stop tinkering and make a product. Nakamura ignored him, believing in his work. One key to stronger LEDs was a special layer. The best material for this layer was known, but nobody could grow it. Nakamura had a customized machine and used brute force to get some to work. It wasn't perfect, but he kept going. In 1992, Nakamura had a brilliant blue LED, way brighter than anything before. He showed it to the company president, who was thrilled. Nichia, Nakamura's company, announced the world's first true blue LED. The tech world was speechless. Orders poured in, and Nichia's profits soared. Soon, they made white LEDs by combining blue LEDs with a special material. Nakamura's invention launched the LED revolution, and today, most lighting sales are LEDs, which are way more efficient and longer-lasting than old bulbs. Nakamura barely got a raise for his world-changing work, though. He left Nichia and even sued them for not being fairly compensated. Now, Nakamura is working on even tinier LEDs for things like virtual reality headsets and LEDs that kill germs with UV light. He's also passionate about solving big problems and recently started a company focused on nuclear fusion. Nakamura shared the Nobel Prize in Physics for his blue LED in 2014. He even offered to make amends with Nichia, but they weren't interested. But maybe even more important than the Nobel Prize, Nakamura finally got his PhD after all those years. And guess what his favorite color is? Blue, of course. What do you think about Nakamura's journey? How effective do you think this creation is in our lives? Let us know in the comments below and subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.